Because we're just going to be building a simple LAN in this scenario, we only need a switch and two PCs. Now these two PCs are going to need a way of physically connecting. The end goal of this exercise or drill is to ping between these two PCs, you know, to test for connectivity. If you're a gamer, you may have seen ping when you look at the scoreboard or the leaderboard in a match. Um, you'll see like ping on the far right. That's just a test message and we're going to do it. So if, if you feel like you can do this on your own, pause the video now and challenge yourself to do it. Otherwise, let's keep going. I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to need some connectors. Remember, the connections tab, that, that uh, Harry Potter scar, we can't use this. This is cheating. This is auto connect. It'll automatically con uh, auto select the type of connection you'll need given the port you select. So in this case, we're going to use a copper straight through. This would be like your ethernet cable, right? So we're going to select fast ethernet. Fast ethernet is 100 megabits per second speed. And we'll connect to a 100 megabits per second speed on the switch. A lot of switches out there, their actual ports that go to the PCs are uh, 10100 or fast ethernet, which is surprising because now we're living in an age where we have one gigabit per second or 10 gigs. So that's something that needs to be upgraded in a network. And you could be a hero if you, you bring that on board at a company, right? So go ahead and connect this one as well make our connections you'll notice the orange light or amber light it actually means that the network is in the in the process of converging uh, the ports are actually in a transitioning state from learning to forwarding you'll learn how to speed up that process later on when we start talking about spanning tree so for now um, we've got our physical connections which is in osi model terms our layer one connectivity has been established uh, we will talk about the osi model in a separate video uh, and we'll cover it in great depth because you need to know it. Now that we have full convergence, and I could have fast forwarded time, but I just wanted you to get a feel for like some of the, the you know, waiting you have to do sometimes with networking uh, and in IT in general. So uh, with our connections established, we need something additional for ping. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but we need an IP address. IP is internet protocol, right? And that's kind of like a phone number or a house address, right? That you know, it's an identifier, a logical identifier that's designed to change. So let's do that. Follow along. I'm going to go into this PC. The interface is going to pop up. I'm going to go ahead and go to desktop, you know, give it IP config, give it an IP address. I'm going to use a standard class C address and IP addresses that are broken into different classes. We're going to use a class C, which is the most common. I'm going to give this one dot 10. You ta hit tab and it'll autofill. It'll autofill if you put your cursor in there too. That's a subnet mask. Now, the subnet mask is like an area code where the IP address is like a phone number, right? So default gateway, this would be the address we'd give a router if we wanted to connect to the internet. But for now, we are not going to do the a gateway or a DNS server. I just want to do the bare minimum to ping between the PCs, right? So let's keep going. Give this PC an address. And if you had to guess, what would you give this PC? I'm going to go ahead and give it an, a dot eleven. Remember, no devices can have the same address if they're on the same LAN or on the same network, right? Same subnet mask. Because really, let me break down this. Before we really dive into IP addressing, I just want you to know that this subnet mask specifically defines the network portion of an IP address and the host portion. The network portion is like the the identifiers that need to match on the same network. A host is what actually can change. So know, know this, wherever there's a zero, that's a host. Wherever there's a one or a network bit, like 255, that will need to match, right? That will indicate that you're in the same network. So now that we have those, let's go to command prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and go to command prompt here. And I'm going to issue an IP config because this is kind of simulating Windows. And how do I know that? I can see the C colon. That's a Windows thing. Um, be, uh, because it's simulating Windows, we're going to use Windows commands like IP config. But if I was on Mac or Linux, I would use IF config, which is interface config. IP config is... 
uh, internet protocol configuration. So you see we've got the IP address set. Um, I know on this one I'm going to confirm that as well. Usually this is uh, something that I, a DHCP does for us. It'll assign an IP address, but because I want to give you an idea of how this works, we're doing it statically, which is manually entering in the IP address. Cool, both of them those settings took. So I'm going to test this connection. Let's do ping 192.168.0.11. Enter. Oh, sweet. I got some replies. So notice how many replies I got by default. I'll press up and see if that's the same each time. On a Windows-based system, ping sends four messages. And I know this is a successful reply because it's giving me statistics, right? And also look down here at the ping statistics. It's telling me I sent four, received four, and lost none. Sweet. So congratulations, you just built your first network.